Hey, it's Madison the Black Eagle, and here's what you missed today. Did we get their diploma, got their voter registration card at the same time. Uh, well, that's what we, those are the kind of creative ideas that we should be taking nationwide. Sure. We want everybody to vote. And so part of the strategy, and it's clear, has been in, in states across the country, is to limit people's right to vote. Well, why would you want to do that? Why wouldn't you want to have everybody engaged in the democratic process? That's what makes us a strong country, a vibrant democracy. Well, their argument would be, uh, in in the short time we have, their argument is, and we're hearing some people call into the show, they're saying, well, you know, it's voter fraud. We can't have voter fraud. And then I saw this article where a comprehensive investigation was done on voter fraud, and they found 31 credible incidents. And this is in the Washington Post today. Oh, I know. I know. You read that? Yeah. Out of one billion ballots. The matter is is that there isn't voter fraud um, that would justify these kind of draconian actions. It's ridiculous. It really is just ridiculous. And so what we have to do as citizens is we have to engage. We have to participate in the process. And, and even in the states where they've made it more onerous, that doesn't take away our responsibility to vote. And so we have to get... No, you go ahead. No, no. And I, I, I so much concur with you. But, you know, it's, it's, we almost have to... We, I think of what is going to happen is people have lost hope. And so intellectually, I do understand that. I do not accept it as an excuse. But when you lose hope, then you don't believe that anyone represents... Your interest. I mean, the reality, for example, is that we, uh, if we look at the conditions that many of our, our folks in our community live in today, the, dis- the, 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 the situation is beyond, beyond abysmal. It's, it's so tragic. In, in 2015, with a country with a 17 plus trillion dollar uh, economy, plus 17 trillion, and yet we are having more and more folks being pushed into poverty. I mean, as, as you know, Joe, and have always talked about, dad and mom dedicated their lives to the eradication of the triple evils of poverty, racism, militarism, and violence. And when we look at poverty, the numbers continue to grow, and African Americans represent a disproportionate number of those who are living in those tragic conditions. And so we've we just got a lot of work to do. And, and I guess what I'm saying is people feel like, okay, uh, here we are in 2015, and three or four generations, my family lives have not improved. So why should I vote? That's no justification. The reality is if we've been voting more and getting different people in office, then the plight of the masses of people would be different. Uh, but, I mean... Now, this is interesting. I, I just want to recap so quickly so people understand. You're from California. You're in, you're in Mississippi. <laughs> But, and they, they pick you because, oh, you, you, they figure you're the best because you're not from Mississippi. If it had been from somebody from Mississippi, who knows if he would have made it. But I got you. I got you. He'd have been gone. He'd have been gone. No ifs, ands, buts about it. Got you. Now, let me, let me, because I really don't want to give it all away. But how did these letters come about? How, I mean, obviously he felt some comfort level. He probably, thank God I got you instead of somebody from Mississippi. But how did you, how, what are these letters that now are, are, these are, what is it, over 100 letters? And they're going to be mm-hmm. part of the National Museum of African American History and Culture. And I know Lonnie Bunch, who is a good friend of ours, he's thrilled about this. This is amazing. How did mm-hmm. these letters come about? Um, I understand. I didn't know anything about the man and any of his history, okay? And while, me, I'm living in a, while I'm living with the guy, he starts talking to, talking to me and I don't know what I can say over the radio word wise. No, but, you, you can know, say this is this is Sirius XM, so we are satellite radio, so you can say whatever okay. you want to. He um it's not my word, but there's no way to talk about Edgar Ray Kilns without using language sometimes that's not polite. And I, this is I, going to I be understand. A, yeah, go ahead. I, I, I do it all book, the time. So. Go ahead. Yeah. Um I'm not comfortable with it, but it's a fact. Um, when he first saw met me, he came he he wrote he came behind me and and I didn't know who he was. I didn't even look at him. I was unloading my locker and he said he said, okay, nigga, what do you got to bring me? I said, what? Did somebody just call me the N-word? So we have a ruling deal that if somebody call you the N-word, turn around, hit first, and especially if it's a white guy, ask questions later. That's just a ruling prison with blacks. And 
I didn't, I didn't get involved. I didn't want to touch the guy. I'm trying to go home. I'm fighting for my freedom. So I ignored him, and then a few minutes later, I heard him say again. He said, Nico, do you hear me talking to you? I said, okay, somebody's getting too much with this N-word. And I turn around. Well, my roommate told me, that's Edgar Ray Killens. I'm tired of hearing this man's name. I'm like, well, who in the hell is Edgar Ray Killens? And so I turn around, and I said, oh, my God, it was an old man in a wheelchair. And I'm saying to myself, I can't hit him. You know, from California, we don't hit old people, no matter what. I don't, you know, I don't know what the rest of the world do, but don't touch this man. He's in a wheelchair. He's old. And I didn't know nothing about his history, so I stayed out of it. I left him alone. I made him matter at me than he was trying to make me by using these racial epithets because I ignored him. And for three days straight, he called me everything but a child of God. I was everything but a black man. Um, I ignored him to say one word to him. On the third day, he came to me, and he threw some paperwork on my desk, on my, my, um, my bed, and said, he said, nigga, read this paperwork and tell me what you think. That's when I snapped. I said, Edgar, you want me to help you with your legal work? You've been calling me everything but a child of God for three days? That man looked me straight in the eye, Joe, and says, you're damn straight, nigga, read the paperwork. I had a laugh, because this man was so resilient, so he believed in this so much, there was nothing humble about him. He was not going to be nice to get my help. I was nothing but the N-word to him. Lord and an animal. That's all he felt about me. And so by being his roommate for a while, he started telling me things. And two weeks after I went to his room, this is how we become communi- he started communicating with me about the past. They bought some food with feces in it, and they peed in his coffee. And I knew they was about to do it because the whole prison was there to watch him eat it as a, as a kind of retribution. And being a Christian... I snapped. I'm thinking to myself, I'm in here with a bunch of criminals, pedophiles, people who've done things that's unseemly. Um, some of these pedophiles, I'd rather put a bullet in their head than, than egg or kill them because what they did to these little girls, and I have a daughter. So I wasn't in there to try to judge who's worse than other. You know, it's like one wine will go into another wine, yeah. so when I get that drunk, I'll, I'll quit. So we're going to run you know, out of time, but, uh, but okay. anyway, you protected him. So real uh, no, quick, I didn't protect. I, I I didn't protect. I didn't protect him. It just was just wrong for any I, human I got to go you. for that. Yeah, okay. Now what? And so, how did you get real quick? How did you get possession of these letters? Well, he started telling me stuff that I thought was crazy, and the wardens and the lieutenants started asking me why he's telling me these things, and I thought that what he was telling me was fake. You know, this crazy old man talk. Yeah, we have they just a me, minute left. Go ahead. Okay, they told me that the stuff was true, and one of the um. Inmates that was been there for 18 years said, you need to get this man to write this stuff down or the world would never believe what he's telling you. So uh, I told that one day, I said, I said, Edgar, I said, I said, I said, do you want to get your thoughts down? And he says, he said, I'd like to he, he, for you to know, I said, well, write it down. I would now stop talking to him and I would give him a piece of paper and I would leave and he would start writing. He started liking to write. He wrote everything. He wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. He how how letter. many letters are there all together? <laughs> About approximately 174 letters. Wow. Um, personal letters to me. He confessed to everybody he's ever killed. He's talked to me about his whole life story. He told me what really happened the night that Goodman Cheney and Schwerner was actually killed. Um, his actual involvement, um, he actually deeded over, you know, his property to me. I own his, his 41 acres of property. He gave that to me as well. Wow. For, he gave you 40 acres? 41 and a half acres. Did, acres did, did, a mule, did a mule go with it? No. <laughs> you know, uh, you know that, uh, you, people always say that. I, people always laugh that I got my retribution. I know. I know. There's, a Don, right. there's a John Deering on the property, so I guess that's the mule. Well, so. man, well Reverend Stern, you know, I got to tell you, thank you for t- uh, that. You know, we're going. You know, I'm going to tell you, one of the first exhibits I'm going to be going to is is these letters. I, okay. I thank you so much, and I promise we'll have you back. Uh, Can you do one thing for me, Joe? Can you ask anybody who wants to support what I'm trying to do in racial reconciliation? Just look me up on No Color Lines on Facebook. We'll put it on our, I tell you what, we'll put it on our Facebook. I appreciate it. You got it. Thank you so much. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.